Hello students, Mrs. Van Sickle here with an overview of how your infographic will be assessed. On the left side of your screen, you will see a rubric with various categories and criteria and ratings five through one, three through zero. All these points add up to 35 points. That's the maximum. Well, that is unless there's extra credit, unless you've gone above and beyond, this project is worth 35 points. On the right, you'll see an example of an infographic. Remember, an infographic should have visuals that explain the information more than the text. You should have a nice balance between text and visuals, but the visuals should really be um, easy to read, easy to interpret, so that your reader doesn't have to struggle to understand or interpret the information that you have researched. So looking at the left side of the screen, this first area that will be assessed is what's, what is more, most important, important about an infographic, the visuals. And this first uh, criteria is infographic contains one well-defined cause or one well-defined problem with visuals and or texts. So if we take a look at this example, At the top, we can see sharks finning causes eco imbalance. Well, we have a keyword right there. There is the word cause. So this tells me that it's a cause and effect infographic. The next area, using statistics to support your effects or solutions. And you should have at least three statistics. You have at least three statistics, you've met the criteria. Remember, a statistic is anything that it has a number involved that conveys information. So, in the year in 2019, two people, two people in the entire world have been killed by sharks in the year 2019. This statistic, number of sharks in the thousands. So each of these sharks down below represents a thousand. Number of sharks in the thousand, thousands killed by people every hour in 2019. So we have 12 sharks, 12 times a thousand, 12,000, believe it or not, 12,000 sharks are killed every hour in the year 2019, we're killed every hour in the year 2019 as to only two people were killed by sharks in the year 2019. So this is a statistic, visual statistic. This is a statistic. We keep scrolling here. We have three more statistics, five. And that looks like it's about it. So these statistics have some explanation below them, which you would need. Again, an infographic is a nice balance of text and visuals. So looking back over here at the rubric, this individual would receive the three, the full three points out of three points. Using expert quotes or testimonials, remember an expert in the field to support your claim or your position is very influential. So let's see if there are any expert testimonials here. Well, I do see something here. I see something in quotation marks. And remember, quote, expert quotes, testimonials, experts in the field, if you're quoting them directly, they do need to be in quotation marks. And this quote explains why sharks are important. And this is by Julie Anderson, ocean conservatist and founder of Shark Savers. Clearly somebody who's qualified in giving her opinion about sharks, saving sharks. And up here, shark finning is the worst act of animal cruelty I've ever seen, Chef Gordon Ramsay. You might be thinking, how is Chef Gordon Ramsay an expert in the field? Well, the reason why sharks' fins are, why sharks are being killed is because of their, their fins. People in the Far East eat thin soup. So they chop off the fins and then they throw the sharks back in the ocean and they die. Very cruel. So, however, there are only 
going back to our rubric, I'm required to have three testimonials and I only have two. So this area, this person, this individual would only get the score of two instead of the full three points as there are not three testimonials. And as you can see, testimonials can be very short or they can be a bit more involved. Using facts to support your effect or your solution. So let's take a look at some other facts here. Sharks help maintain balance in marine ecosystems. Well, yes, that's a fact. And believe it or not, we're looking at a visual here. This marine ecosystem, this is actually a visual definition of what a marine ecosystem is. So that would be considered a fact. Instead of giving the definition for a marine ecosystem, I've provided an image for that for you. Another fact up top here is that it's also part of my cause. Sharks, shark finning are causing eco imbalance. Who knew that sharks being killed off would cause an imbalance to the ecosystem. That's another fact. Sharks are worth more alive than dead because they are contributing to balancing out our environment, the ocean environment. And you can actually kind of cross reference. You can use statistics and facts together. So here you would see that there is a statistic. You know what? There's also a fact here about the statistics. So this person has clearly met the minimum criteria for using facts to support your claims. Text structures. So remember in your research, your document, you needed to have at least three effects or three solutions. So let's see if this individual has included three effects as a result of sharks being killed in oceans. One of the effects right here, why sharks are important, is they maintain balance in marine ecosystems. Here's another fact that explaining more in more in depth as to why ecosystems are so significantly important to the world. And here's another piece of evidence here in your infographic that's also a statistic, that's also a fact, gives an explanation as to, or excuse me, gives another effect regarding the cause of sharks being eliminated from the oceans. If we go back to the rubric, looking at logical visuals here, the visuals are more visual than text. Again, we're looking for a balance there and they accurately, accurately represent the synthesized research. I would say this is a pretty good example of balancing text and visuals. So this person would get pretty high score here. Grammar and conventions, as always, punctuation, spelling, capitalization, all that applies. It always applies. And last but not least, the visual format. Taking a look at your final product Is it super busy? Do you have a, a lot of text and not a lot of and not a lot of visuals? Do you have a lot of visuals and not a lot of text? Um, are the colors nicely balanced? Really, you don't want to go more than four or five colors. If you have anything more than four or five colors in your infographic, you're, it, it's going to look really chaotic and you want to make sure that your information comes across very cleanly. Um, I would say that this is a nice example of how the colors are balanced and how the text, even though we have a shark in the background and there's text covering the shark, that shark is pretty transparent and it's not 
too chaotic where we can't read the text here. So I would say this person did a really nice job with the visual form format and would probably score pretty highly in that area as well. So that's just an overview of how your infographic will be assessed using this rubric. It will look a little bit different in Google Classroom, but the criteria will still be the same. As always, if you guys have any questions, you know where to find me.